experience drive through the center of a tornado. I bet you won't forget it. That's one of the things they cut when you were kids. You got into got into something not knowing how bad it was going to be until you got in. And then you wanted to get out of it. And you had to get through it to do it. I didn't have nothing to do with that. That was all gone. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I can promise you that. You know, I don't think... You know, if you tell somebody that, they go, oh, why, how, how come, if you went into the middle of a tornado, how come, I'll tell you why. Because God had planted my car, that's why. Amen. Yeah. When, it takes a lot to snap a telephone pole. And that, Max, it was a domino, brother. They were snapping. One, I watched the power lines mm -hmm. falling and the trees going up in the air and stuff hitting my car, and I couldn't see the road. There was a truck in front of me, though. I, I seen his flashers. And I said, well, he's in it, I'm in it. We go. <laughs> and he was the only way I stayed in the road. We're not running off the road, but I'm not kidding, y'all. It's you, you would have to go through it to believe it. I can say I've never been in I always said I ain't never been in a tornado. Well, I can say I have now. <laughs> and I can tell y'all I don't want to be in another one. Amen. It was something else. It was an experience. God, I thank God for uh, his, for what we're fixing to break open the bread of life to this morning. This is part two of last week's message. What's in your spiritual bank? Uh, it'll pick up with my uh, yeah. It pick it. I, I, it picks up good. I got a big mouth, Susie. <laughs> I want y'all, if you do, if you brought your swords this morning, I pray to God you bring your Bible to church on Sunday. Amen. Uh, you need to break open that Bible and fill that Bible and read that Bible. And, Amen. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a whole different experience than an iPhone, an iPad, or a computer. Just breaking open just the Word, Brother James. Just opening it up. That 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 should be exciting to us that we still are able to do this. Amen. Amen. To Hebrews chapter four, and it's just that one <coughs> verse, the last verse of Hebrews chapter four, and it's verse sixteen. And stand with me as we read this verse this morning, and may God bless the reading of his word and all God's children say. Amen. And here we go. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, as I come to your throne this morning, I approach with such gratitude and thanksgiving and praise and worship in my heart, Lord Jesus. The things you do, Lord God, are unexplainable. The prayers, the football teams, all of them, kneeling in the field and praying to you. And the cross, as they mentioned this morning, being exposed. And God, there's a revival taking place. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad. You said in the last days there'd be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Pour it on, Lord. Pour it all over us. We need it. We're filthy. And we need a cleaning. God, I thank you this morning that I can come to your throne boldly. Boldly. And receive mercy and grace for my time of need. I just pray the rest of us get it this morning, Lord God. It's, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to serve you. Amen. It's a privilege to be blessed by you. It's a privilege to know you. We love you this morning and praise you, Lord. May you get all the glory today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. You may be seated. Last week, beloved, when I brought the message, I... I hope you obtained and understood that the whole meaning of the first part of this two-part series is the fact that you're able to come to God's throne boldly. In other words, I want you to picture with me this morning a bank. What if I told you 
Butch, there's a bank that you can go to. Walk straight in it. They already know you. And you can walk straight up to that counter boldly and tell them no matter what you ask for, no matter how big it is, you're going to get it. What if I told you of such a bank? Be nice. You'd be burning the rubber off the tires, wouldn't you, to go there, to go, to see, what, to see if what I told you was true. And you'd walk in that bank boldly and, and you would expect them to know you because I told you of this place and that they already knew you. Right? That's what God's telling us here about our spiritual bank. Sister Joab, we can walk, come to His throne boldly. He knows who we are. We can walk up to the counter, the spiritual counter. In other words, while we're on our knees, we're able to walk up to it, Sister Kim, get down on our knees, whether it be the altar, and I'm telling you, I, I expect that altar to be visited more in that sanctuary. I charge the church, try me, try God, and let me know how it works out for you. Amen. Anyway, you can. God's telling us here that we can walk in, Sister Kim, to His spiritual bank and tell Him what, tell them what, tell Him what we need. And, if, and, and but but there's 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 one thing that's required. One. Can you go in your bank and walk up to the counter and tell them I need $50,000, please hand it to me and have a great day? Can anybody in here walk up to their bank and tell them they want fifty grand, and there's no questions, they just give you the money? No. If you can, I want to hang out with you for a while, but no, you can't. Unless You've got three times that much in that bank. They know you're good for it. They ain't going to question you and they're just going to write, give you the money and you can leave. Right? But you have to make deposits. Mm -hmm. There has to be large deposits made for you to be able to walk in that your bank and withdraw 50 grand. Amen? Amen? Well, it's no different with God. Where were you at on your spiritual bank this morning? How full is it? How full of it is your prayer life? How full of it is your Bible reading? How full of it is in your daily walk? Uh, how full of it is in your witnessing? Or how, how about this? Here's a big one that puts a lot in your spiritual bank, uh, Mad Max. Have you led somebody to Christ lately? Amen. You see, we're in control of what's in our spiritual bank. God's just the owner of the bank. He's the president, the CEO. And when you go up to him and ask him for a withdrawal, I'm pretty sure it's going to be based off of how much you've got in that bank spiritually. How how listen, can you expect God, Brother James, to just keep giving, to keep to keep pulling withdrawals when you're not making any deposits? No. You know, the sad part, you know the the the, the the sad part about student loans is these card, these companies, they prey on colleges. And when these new fresh students, freshman students come in away from their parents, away from their authority and knowledge, they hit them and they bombard them and they tell them, here, it's free. Amen. It's free. You can pay it back later. This is for your college. Enjoy and have you. It's everything you need is right here. They want them to spend more Amen. and more and more. Well, that's what the devil wants from us. He wants you to spend all your time and your effort and your work and your ability on him right. and get you sin in sin debt so that you can't get out. Therefore, you can't go to the bank because your credit score is too low. Am I making that's sense right. this Amen. morning, church? Amen. How can we expect God to give us what we need, by the way, because it says you can go boldly and, and obtain. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to receive mercy. God never would never not give us mercy. Amen. 
He showed that, I believe, on Mount Calvary. If that's not enough showing for you, then you're you're in trouble anyway. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. The mercy's there. In other words, the kindness, the love. Yes, I wished I could, uh, Pastor J.R., but listen. When's the last time you actually talked to the CEO? You ain't been here in so long, we done forgot what you look like. I don't even remember your wife or your children. <laughs> you need to start coming in more. And and build you need to build your account back up, brother. You're running low. I know, I've been in sin debt. I'm I'm upside down on my loans. Huh? <laughs> The devil's done got me so deep in debt, I don't know if I can get out of it. Well, yeah, you can. Yes, you can. But you got to go to the CEO and explain to him why you got in debt and why you're there and how you're going to get out. Amen. You can't, I don't care how deep in debt, sin debt you are. I'm here to tell you, Brother James, the CEO of that spiritual bank will bail you out every single time. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. But you got to go to him. That's right. The little counter clerk ain't gonna cut it. That's right. You know what I mean? Calling a friend, hey, have him pray for me at church. Will you? I'm gonna have to take that alarm clock off there. I know what time it is, amen. <laughs> but my point is, I don't know what just happened here, something did. Anyway. If God's telling me that I can come in boldly, Spence, what's stopping me? Amen. What's stopping me from asking God for what I need? He says in His Word here, I'm going to obtain mercy and grace to help me in my time of need. But uh, if we're honest this morning, it's, it is sin. We know that we are in trouble, we're in sin debt. Remember, we're talking about spiritual banking here, if there were such a thing. But we know we're in sin debt. You know, with the student loan debts, they, they get that credit card, but they don't use it for the... Most of them don't even use it for the... School. school. Amen. That's right. They use it for partying and... Uh, maybe a per <laughs> some of them even buy cars uh, to get around and about and get back and forth. And you know, can you you send your child off to college and you're, you they're in a dorm and you didn't send them in a car, but they come home in a car. That might rise some questions. Amen. Amen. But I, I tell you, the, the student loan debt is ridiculous, yes. and the banks ought to be ashamed of themselves, but they're not. The devil don't care who you are. You think he's ashamed of getting you, of, of shaming you? No. The further spiritual in debt, sin debt he gets you, the more you got to ask God for. That's right. Why wouldn't he want to get us that deep in debt spiritually? And I'm here to tell you all this morning, if you have believed the lie that he has told you that you have got yourself too deep in sin or you're, this particular sin that, that's, that's, that's running your account up, God, God ain't going to forgive you for that. That's a lie from hell. That's right. Uh, if you're, if, if, and, and that's especially for the ones that might listen to this on, on our webpage or on or by cell phone, if the devil has convinced you that you can't come back to church, if he's told you that you know God's not, you know how they're going to look at you. Well, let me tell you something. First off, if you're in a church where you have to worry about what the people's going to think about you, you're in the wrong church Amen. anyway. Amen. You ought to be able to walk in your church boldly, and 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 listen. You don't have. You don't confess to the church. You That's confess right. to amen. God. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. The church is. Listen. If if they want to judge you, 
Oh boy. <laughs> Amen. That's okay. Just know that whatever measure they judge you with, they're going to be judged the same. That's right. So let them go on and, and, and you know, I've said it and I'm going to say it again. Y'all know how I feel about it and you better not do it to me unless you, can, unless you expect I'm getting what I'm fixing to tell you. If, if something happens to me spiritually, Brother James, and I have a falling off, amen, and you don't see me for a while and I come back to the church, go on and walk up to me and say, Brother, how you been? I, how's things been going with you? I sure have missed you. You go on and do that and not one of y'all call me one single time. Go on and ask me that question, and this is what I'm going to tell you. Really? You want to know how I've been now? Where was you when I was in trouble? Amen. Why didn't you call my house? That's right. Why didn't you come see me? Amen. I think the only reason you're asking, Butch, is because you just want to be nosy. You don't care what I've been through. You just want to know so you can go get on the phone when you get home and call everybody and tell them. There you go. Because I didn't hear nothing from you when I was in trouble. There you, right. go. there you go. How many times has that happened to you? Where I listen, maybe I'm the only one in here that's backslidden. I don't know. Nope. But they ain't nothing set me on fire more than when I'd come back to church and say, so, and I know this it's the same one every time. <coughs> and all they wanted to do was be nosy. And one time I done what I just told John. I tell you what, she didn't ask me no more. <laughs> she didn't ask nobody no more. Because if you really care about your brother or your sister in Christ, That's right. what did Jesus say? The shepherd left the 99 Amen. and went after the one. Right? Amen. It don't have to be a visit. It could be a text message. It could be a phone call. But at least they know you care. Amen. But nothing works better than a letter. And we got we we fixing to start that here at East Duet Baptist Church. Where are you at this morning with your spiritual bank? Can you walk in and tell the CEO, "Here I am. I've gotten myself in debt, sin debt, and I need a loan. I need a spiritual loan. I need to. I need you to bail me out, Lord." Well, let's, let's have a look at your uh, account. It's been a minute since I even heard from you. I noticed you quit tithing. Um, I also noticed you got a new car out there. Brand new car. See, you've recently moved to a nice big home. Looks like you've got a new job and a raise. Why are you in here? Have you not seen my mercy and my grace? Do you think that you obtained all this on your own? Who do you think gave you that new job and that raise and allowed that loan to go through for that new car and, and, and that new home? Do you think you've done this on your own? This is exactly what he told Job. No. You did. But I'm expecting some more deposits in your spiritual bank. You see, your local church, they need you. They need you to fill that pew that you once sat in and they need you to hear you say amen. Praise God, glory to the King. Amen. You see, your church is where you need to be. That's where, you're, that's where you make your deposits. And, 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 and uh, you know, your, your nightly deposits, your prayer life and your Bible reading. Let's see if we can't work on this count a little bit. But yeah, I'll give you the loan. I already have. I sent my son to die for you. Amen. Amen. Don't let the devil convince you this morning, beloved, that you can't ask forgiveness for anything. Amen. Amen. Because in, from what I what I what I get from the Bible, Sister Joab, what I've read, he says in First John one nine, for he is faithful and just to cleanse all unrighteousness. Amen. 
He also says in his word, Brother James, that if any man or woman will confess their sin, I am faithful and just to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. That's the God we serve. Amen. That's the spiritual bank spent I want my account in. Amen. Can I get an amen? Because the other one don't do nothing but take. That's right. God gives. And He don't give just a little bit, Sister Linda. He gives His all. He gives more than we do. Amen? Amen. amen. I want y'all to stand with me this morning. If you're able, or stubborn, <laughs> church listen, if you want to see our church thrive, you want to see this church grow, and it's going to, and it's coming, Amen. we need to make sure our spiritual banks are, are in check. Because it's going to take... You know that old saying, Brother ja uh, Mike, it takes a village to raise a child? Yes. It's going to take this village for this, for this community and the next few surrounding communities over. Because I do believe this with all my heart. This church on the hill, as I've always called it, I said we're the little church on the hill, will be the brightest of all. I have seen the vision the school that we'll have. I've, oh, Brother James, I always thought, how can we do a, a, church, a school there, Lord, when there's a big hill drop down there? He said, it's going to be three stories from down there up and two stories up here. You're going to walk in up here and be able to go down yonder. There's going to be a school in that hole right there. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and I don't know, Sister Kim, but i got a feeling you're going to be the the principal. <laughs> the head schoolmaster. you got to have a vision, Sister Kim. The Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. I believe. Look, I don't care if you believe it or not. You will, you will when you see it. Amen? I don't Amen. have to have my... It don't matter what you believe. I know what I believe. Amen. Amen. I believe in my God. Amen. I also believe that nothing is impossible with Jesus. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? I want us to be that church. I want you to be the headmaster of that school because I know you'll do it and you'll do it with your heart. Mm -hmm. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Let's bow our heads. It's time to get honest with the CEO this morning. You might be in here this morning and you haven't made any deposits lately or you should be making more. I don't know. God does. But I'll tell you, He deserves it. Because if He's going to keep allowing you to make withdrawals, why wouldn't you want to make deposits? Look around. Think about what He's given us. Think about what you have. Think about how much more you have than others do. That has nothing to do with you. And if you're in here this morning and the devil has convinced you that i done it, you better think again. Because the Bible also says this, and I'm going to close with this before I pray. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Don't go around thinking you've done anything. Because without God, how lost we would be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I know who my Redeemer is, and I know my Redeemer liveth. Father, I pray this morning that if there be anybody in this sanctuary that the devil has or is trying to pull away. Lord, like that, that child that's had everything given to him and hasn't had to pay anything for it. Lord, sometimes we can get spiritually spoiled. God, I just want you to know I thank you for everything I got. I want you to know I thank you for my job. Thank you for putting me back in that warehouse. Thank you, Lord God, for my wife and my son and my daughter and my three grandchildren. Thank you, Lord God, for my church family 
what they mean to me, God. How I love each and every one of them and pray for each and every one of them every single day. But God, if we're all honest in here with you this morning, every single one of us, we've got, we, we, could, we could make more deposits. Father, I ask you this morning to forgive me for any deposits I haven't made that I should have. Lord, you deserve everything I got and then some. And I want to thank you uh, again specially this morning for what you did for me Thursday evening on my way home. Wow. I cry every time I think about it. I love you, Lord. I praise you. And to God be the glory. Great things He has done, hasn't done, and still is yet to do. And Lord, we all here at Easter Lamp Baptist Church want to say thank you for that sanctuary. And for all you've done there, Lord. Amen. What a blessing. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. We ask this in your precious and none other than holy name. The name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen, amen and Amen.